Oh, con mucho gusto. Encantado. <laughs> All right, we'll tell the story. coming along, they, they weren't playing. They weren't playing at all. Because uh, I, you know, I'm getting on up there, but not not to tell my age. I know we grew up around the 50s to the 65, somewhere in there, 50 through 65. And the music, just, we just didn't hear it. Uh, around the late, early 70s, we began to hear murmurings about, we at, at the family reunions, Joe and Odell are gonna be playing you know, and so we didn't know exactly what they were going to be playing, but we would stop and go, and then they were square dancing. They were playing the the um, fiddler and the banjo, and and we knew, you know, we enjoyed it, but we had no idea. First of all, this was black history, black music, till I really got involved, and then we had no idea how what a tradition it was. You know how far back. It went, you know, and then I learned, oh my God, that the banjo came from Africa. So, I mean, I was into it then. And so that that's probably why I went forward with the film as well, knowing the history, knowing I got kinfolk doing it, living and do, breathing it. So I was in it. So we have something here that's not just about our day and time, but we have something about the day and time of so many people who came before. So that's what I think is very special about Joe and Odell, the fact they've maintained aspects of so many different cultures, not only black culture, but a shared culture of blacks and whites that was probably important here from a very, very long time ago. It was in the 70s when um, that this young guy, I think he was in one of the Greensboro colleges at that time, came looking for these black fiddlers. And I think it was at a time where the whole country was trying to do right by the African American, that they had made several contributions to this country. And at that time, people were beginning to to realize that and to accept that and to go looking for those who had made those One of the several reasons why bought this house and had a finished basement. Wait a minute, you're suggesting that black fiddlers disappeared? They I'm... absolutely did not disappear. We just haven't documented them. I think that's really the truth. They were around, but people didn't pay any attention to them. I think that's, the, well, you found that out with black banjo players. You can see all the interest in black banjo players that's emerged over the years. I don't think fiddle players are that much different. It's just that they weren't documented and they certainly didn't appear in abundance on these race records in the 1920s. So it's really pretty recently that people have said, oh, there were but there were black fiddle players around. And that lineage goes back decades and decades, you know, into the 18th century. People are just now figuring that out. So it's just, it's not that they weren't there. It's that people didn't pay attention and didn't document them in the way that we think in the 21st century uh, would have made for uh, a deeper knowledge. <laughs> 